Hey there. So today we are going to start a Vaisha course. Okay. So before that, uh, let's discuss today's agenda. First, intro to Vaisha, and then installation process, and then important terms, which is basically related to networking. Because before uh, getting into Vaisha, we need to understand some very important networking concepts. Okay. Then Vaisha GUI interface. Uh, as there are uh, as there are two ways to interact with the system. First is G uh, is GUI and second is CLI. GUI means graphical user interface, which lets a user to interact with the system or device with the help of uh, graphical elements. Okay, like uh, menus, icons, etc. On the other hand, we have CLI means uh, command line interface which lets a user to interact with their system or device with the help of various commands okay so some operating system provides their users with only cli while some provides with both uh, gui and cli okay next we will see important filters and then packet analysis which is basically used to monitor and analyze our network packets okay and then uh, we will discuss how it is dangerous to log in with your username and password on HTTP request. Okay, and then you will see Wireshark CLI interface, which is known as T Shark. So basically, Wireshark is for GUI and T Shark is for CLI. Okay. So what is Wireshark? Wireshark is an open source cross platform program or tool that is used to capture and analyze network traffic. Okay. Uh, it is the most popular tool uh, and used to used in almost every domain like networking, digital forensics, cybersecurity, etc. So, uh, Wireshark is an open source uh, source, which means we can modify its code or contribute to its source code as well as it uh, it is free to use. Uh, so, there are certain types of software like uh, freeware software that are free to use, but we cannot modify its source code. Then we have paid software, uh, which is of course paid, but uh, we have to buy it, uh, 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 buy it after using its trial version. Okay, so now you can find uh, the source code of the Wireshark at this link. Okay, now, so uh, and cross platform means it can be run at any uh, any platform like Windows, Linux, and Mac, etc. Okay, now the question arises. What is the need of using Wireshark? It's like, it's like uh, why are we using such a complex tool? So, uh, the answer is simple. To analyze packets. Yeah, uh, it's all about the data packets. But uh, what is packet analyzing used for? So, packet analysis, also known as packet sniffing or packet analyzing, is used to inter uh, intercept and capture live data as it travels over the network like uh, ethernet or wi-fi okay uh, in order to understand what is happening in the network i repeat packet analysis uh, analyzes the process which is also known as packet sniffing or packet analyzing is used to inter uh, intercept and capture live data as it travels over the network okay like uh, uh, ethernet or wi-fi okay in order to understand what uh, what is happening in the network okay so I think this much is clear to you all. Now let's move forward with the installation process. Now for Windows, open the browser and search for Wireshark download. Okay. Then go to uh, go to the Wireshark's official site, Wireshark.org, and then there you will see Windows installer 64 bit and 32 bit. Okay. Then uh, you can download it according to the need of your or architecture of your system. So. Uh, okay, for uh, Fedora or Red Hat based Linux system, the command is yum, sh uh, yum search Wireshark. Okay, so open the machine, then open terminal here. Okay, and type yum search Wireshark. Okay, enter. And then there you will see the uh, number of Wireshark versions. Okay, so for installation yum install okay sudo yum install wireshark okay uh, i mean wireshark version so copy this and then paste it here then enter okay 
then password okay so this will uh, install the wireshark on your uh, red head okay then i am terminating this because for this session we will use debian based systems or os so now debian based systems so in debian based systems like kali linux parrot os ubuntu the wireshark is uh, wireshark comes pre installed in it so uh, but if you, if you want to download it uh, externally so open your machine the command is apt get install wireshark so open your machine you can try this on any debian based machine like kali uh, kali linux parrot os ubuntu but uh, okay so sudo apt get install wireshark enter password okay so this is saying wireshark is already the newest version so we don't need to download it So before starting the Wireshark, let's understand some important networking terms. So uh, first we have IP address. IP address or Internet Protocol is a set of predefined rules under which communication sh uh, shall be conducted. Means IP address in a sense were designed in order to make it possible for devices to communicate with each other over the Internet. Okay, uh, this is the primary purpose of an IP address. It can also be used to pinpoint your exact physical location of uh, of the device you are using it. So suppose just like you have your home address, which helps courier services to deliver uh, to deliver your packages at your home or destination. Same as uh, same is like uh, with the IP address. It helps your system to recognize over the network or internet so that you can send and receive data packets at the correct location. Okay. It is a 32-bit address. Uh, there are four blocks, and each block contains eight bits. And it can go from zero to two five five. For example, uh, one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot twelve. Okay, is an IP address, uh, which is separated by a dot. So next we have ports. Ports are the computer ports are the entry points for all the information coming to our devices, and all the packets that are being transmitted by them. Okay, uh, they work in com uh, combination with IP addresses, directing all outgoing and incoming packets to their proper places. Means, uh, networking ports are the virtual points where the network connection starts and ends. Ports are software-based and managed by your OS operating system. Each port is associated with a specific process or services. Okay, and ports allow computers to easily differentiate between different kinds of traffic. Okay, uh, uh, with each port assigned a number range between 0 to 1023. Okay, but, uh, but the numbers can go higher than that. Most ports are reserved for certain reasons like FTP, DNS, SMTP, HTTP, etc. Okay, next we have DNS. DNA, uh, DNS means domain name system. It resolves domain names to IP addresses and vice versa. For example, google.com. Like, uh, for example, you want to search Amazon.com now. Which one is easier for you to search Amazon.com or an IP address like 205.251.242.103? So, obviously, Amazon uh, Amazon.com is easier to search. So, DNS converts your IP address into domain name system and vice versa. Now, next, we have MAC address. MAC, uh, MAC address stands for Media Access Control. It is a hardware address that uniquely identifies your network card which is manufactured, uh, manufactured by the company. Okay, MAC address is also known as physical address or hardware address. So, uh, MAC address are 48 bits long. They have two hubs like first 24 bits form the organizationally unique identifier or UI and the last 24 bits forms a serial number formerly called an extension identifier. Okay, remember, MAC address uniquely identifies your system over LAN, uh, local area network. And IP addresses uniquely identifies your system over the WAN, wide area network, means internet. So, if you want to change your MAC address permanently, then you have to change your physical NIC card. But you can change your IP address easily with the VPN and proxy. Okay, now you can change your sniff, uh, sniff your 
make address temporary with the help of various tools but it can goes back to its original state when you reboot or restart your system okay now protocols protocols is a set of predefined rules that determine how something should be done okay protocols are agreed upon standardized ways of communication over the internet example tcp ip protocol means uh, as establishing the connection and communicating over it is not enough what is important is the proper communication for example now proper communication in the sense means to ensure that your packets are reaching at a right destination they are not modified or tampered in the middle in any way and they reached in order or uh, sequence and uh, and contain no errors so okay now we have open osi model open system interconnected model which is consist of seven layers osi was developed by uh, iso okay uh, so it is now considered as an architectural model for the intercom intercommunications osi model divides the whole task into seven smaller and manageable layer and each layer is assigned a particular task okay so first we have physical layer which is responsible for uh, for transporting transporting signals over the network at electrical level so it deals with cables network cards routers etc okay next we have data link layer data link layer consists of uh, encoding and decoding of data packets as they are translated into bits okay it is also responsible for handling any errors that might have occurred in the physical layer conducting the flow control okay uh, it is made up of two sub layers uh, mac, mac, mac addressing and ls logical link control so mac control permissions in terms of uh, how a computer will gain access to a, uh, to data and the permission to send the same while on the other hand ls ls synchronizes frames and and ensures flow control and conducts error checking so data link layer so at data link layer your data becomes frames and at network layer it becomes packets okay it is responsible for handling any errors that might have occurred in the physical layer now how can the errors arises at the physical layer uh, there are many reasons that the error can occur like uh, when we transmit the data over long distances the energy can loss during transmission or atten uh, attenuation can occur or sometimes natural calamities like thunderbolt and lightning or some uh, or sometimes you such on or on end of your system which uh, which causes sudden spark in the electrical board, board. so these things uh, changes the binaries of the packets as overall our data is in binaries from 0 and 1 so when the error occurs your 0 becomes 1 and your 1 1 becomes 0 this is how data changes from its original form okay so if one data if one bit changes from uh, if one bit changes then we can we can use single bit error check and if more than one bits change we can use burst error check and crc and error uh, checksum is also used in error checking uh, error check detection and correction okay now we have network layer network layer provides switching and routing it creates virtual uh, circuits it is also in charge of addressing error control and packet sequencing okay so network layer ensures host to host delivery with the help of logical address or IP address, it performs routing uh, at in uh, and it involves RIP and OSPF protocols. Like uh, RIP stands for Routing Information Protocol and OSPF it uh, stands for Open Shortest Path First pro Protocol. So, which is used to do the routing. At network layer, routers are so smart that uh, they know where to forward the packets in the network by the help of uh, routing algorithms. Okay, so it is it also performs fragmentation means uh, dividing your data into packets. Okay, now then we have transport layer, transport layer, transport layer transfer data from one host to another. Okay, it ensures error recovery. In short, it preserves the integrity of data. Integrity means your data has not been tampered in in the middle in any way. Okay, so here lies TCP protocol, and uh, it also guarantees the sequence of data and the data is really used there. Okay, then we have session layer. Session layer coordinates communication between applications. It manages and terminates uh, connection dealing with the sessions. So, uh, it deals overall it deals with the sessions. Okay, then we have presentation layer. Presentation layer it provides uh, independence from difference in data uh, representation. Simply by translating from application to network format and and the uh, other way around. 
means uh, all it does is convert data into suitable form for the application layer to take it. It formulates and encrypts your uh, data for transmission also. Okay. Then we have application layer which supports application running on your computers. It takes into consideration uh, and authentication, which means the intended person is accessing the sources. Okay. Then privacy and it also handles quality of services, provides services for all the manner of file transfers. And here lies uh, HTTP protocols, HTTPS, FTP, uh, and telnet, etc. And other network services. Okay, now let's discuss TCP versus UDP. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. So, TCP is a connection oriented protocol means before transmitting the real data, it established a connection by performing a three-way handshake. Okay, after that it starts to uh, transfer the data. While UDP is a connectionless protocol means uh, it directly starts to send packets without establishing a connection between sender and the receiver. Okay, then we have uh, data sequencing. TCP is ensure data sequencing means data reached at, uh, at a destination in the order way, while UDP unable to sequence the packets. Okay, okay then we have guaranteed delivery, uh, which means TCP guarantees data delivery. And if one of the packet is missing at destination, TCP requests the sender to send back the packet again while UDP cannot guarantee any delivery of data at destination. Okay, then we have retransmission of data. In TCP, retransmission of lost packet is possible, while no retransmission of lost data, lost packet in UDP. Okay, then we have error checking. Um, TCP performs error checking and uh, acknowledgement of data, means uh, sending the acknowledgement packet to the receiver that we have received your data. While in UDP, basic error checking mechanism like uh, checksums, okay, then speed, uh, slower than UDP. Uh, TCP is slower than UDP because TCP has uh, performs various functionalities like uh, sequencing, error checking, acknowledgement, retransmission of data. So, all this process takes time and uh, UDP is faster than TCP. Then we have optimal use. Like uh, HTTPS, HTTP, SMTP, FTP, POP, all uses TCP. And video conferencing, streaming, DNS, UIP uses UDP. Okay, so enough theory. Let's move uh, to the practical part. Okay, so to find the interface you are listening on, open your virtual machine. Okay, open your terminal and then type here ifconfig. ifconfig is a command which will display all your network related uh, details like uh, your IP address, your MAC address, your broadcast IP, your net mask, and your interface's name. Okay, then enter. So here's your uh, here's my interface name, my IP. Okay, MAC address, broadcast IP, and then net mask. Okay. So uh, if we have more than one interface, so all will display here. So I hope this much is clear to you. Okay, now let's get familiar with the with the Wireshark GUI interface. Okay, so open your machine. So open the terminal. Type sudo Wireshark. Then password. Okay, this will open your Wireshark window. Then all your interfaces are listed here. Okay, then select to interface. But before that, go to edit and then preferences. Okay. Now there you see appearances like main window, window size, and show up columns and other basic steps. Okay. Then you have columns. Okay, there you can add any number of columns you want with a type of value. Okay, same colors. Okay. You, uh, there you here you can change the font size and color of the elements and test displayed. On the main window while capturing the packets okay so you can just according to yourself and layout uh, here you can choose your layout the way you want to display or set pages okay then we have capture now there you can select the default interface so that every time you can you start your wireshark you don't need to select the interface again okay 
So select it, default. Okay, then we have filter buttons. Now here you can create filters for different different profiles on the wire chart. Okay, then we have protocols. Okay, there are many. So you don't need to understand all all the protocols, uh, but understand the most important ones like uh, HTTP, HTTPS, TCP, FTP, etc. Okay, and select your interface and start capturing. Okay, so so now on the view tab, go to the view tab, and then uh, there you will see zoom in, zoom out, expand, collapse, all the features, coloring, packet list, coloring rules, coloring, colorize conversion according to yourself. Okay, then go go to packet, next packet, to this packet. Okay, you can do this from here also. Like in this packet, next packet, a specific packet, uh, first packet, and go to the last packet. Okay, and then colorize options. Then zoom in, then zoom out. Okay, then fit on the main window. Then stop button, and then restart. And use a file. If you want to open the packet, then you can select. You can open it from here. Okay. Okay. So there's a filter option where you can apply your filters. Then go to analyze uh, display filters. All your all your default filters are displayed here. Then you have display filter expressions expression that are uh, applied with the filters. These are the default uh, expressions. Okay. So apply as a filter, apply as a filter. So this is enough to get started with the Y chart. Okay, now let's discuss important filters. Okay, filters are used to filter your traffic or packets. Okay. So we have some important filters like HTTP, TCP, UDP, DNS. Okay, let's try it. Open your browser. Sorry, Y chart. And then open your browser. You generate some traffic. Uh, search for anything. Let's say mountain. So, uh, apply some filter. Let's say TCP. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. So, it will display on the TCP packets. Okay. So, at bottom, here you see packets 1504 uh, one and displayed 81.5%. Uh, 81 uh, this will show the quantity of the packets in percentage. Okay. Then we have DNS. Okay. It will display all on the DNS packets. Then we have HTTP. Okay. Then let's say ICMP. So we don't have any packets yet. Let's generate some. Let's say ping. Let's ping google.com. Enter. See. So our packet has been generated. And displayed here. Okay. Then we have UDP or port is equal to 50k. Okay. 
So it shows all the traffic V and UDP on port 53 is DNS. Okay. Then same with TCP. Okay, currently we don't have any packet right? So UDP. Then next we have IP dot source. Source in the sense R IP. So let's say the 92. Dot one six eight ten one two nine. Okay. So uh so it will shows all the packets flow in source IP. Then same as destination IP. VHT. Um okay. Let's find uh the IP of this website. On the terminal. Ping it. So, IP of this website is uh, so here's the IP. Okay, let's find its packet. Copy it. So, it will shows, so it will shows the packet flowing in source, uh, sorry, in destination IP. So, it will shows the packet flowing in the destination IP. Then we have the IP address. IP address. Okay. Uh, so it will shows the packets flowing in particular IP either on the source side or on the destination side. Enter. Okay. Okay. Now let's see packet analysis. It is used to monitor your network packets. Okay. So open your Wireshark. Okay. Let's say we have to analyze this packet. Then expand your bottom window. Okay. First, we have frame. So, it deals with the physical layer. Okay. Then, we have Ethernet second. It shows you the source MAC address and destination MAC address. That's it. Then, we have Internet protocol. which shows the IP version, source IP and destination IP. Then, we have the header land. So, header means whenever we send the data through TCP, TCP adds the header along with the data because headers provide lots of functionalities like the source IP, destination IP, and uh, header land, etc. Then we have header length, then protocol, TCP, okay. Then source address and destination address, okay. Now we have transmission control protocol which shows you the source code. Source port on which we are transmitting our information towards the destination port. These ports are randomly generated via machines and they can be of any number at any given range. And then we have the destination ports. Okay, then acknowledgement number. Then window size. Window size means how much a receiver can receive a data at a time. Okay, then we have checksums. Okay, now that's it. Uh, this is all about the GUI interface and I think it is enough uh, for getting started with the Wireshark. Okay, now let's see how it is dangerous to log in with your username and password on HTTP request. Okay, so what is the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? HTTPS uses SSL certificate to encrypt your normal HTTP request and responses. Means in HTTPS, S stands for SSL certificate which encrypts your HTTP request and responses. Okay, so overall HTTPS is far more secure than HTTP. Okay, let's see it. Open your machine and open your terminal. Type here, sudo Wireshark, open your Wireshark. Okay, select your interface and then minimize it. On the other hand, open your browser.
Okay, so I'll cheer. Test login web page. Okay, enter. So, wait a minute. Search HTTP login web page. Okay, then go on the first link, test PHP. Okay, so username and password. So type here username, let's say admin. And password one two three four five. Okay, and click on login. Okay, now let's find the IP of this website. Okay. okay, enter. So here is the IP of this website. So that we can use in in our filters. Then open the Wireshark. And apply filters. So this is the destination IP. So type IP dot TST is equal to an IP. Okay, and HTTP. Okay, enter. So here you see number of packets. We have five packets and we'll select user info.php. Double click and then expand the last HTML form URL encoded. So here you see uname admin and password 12345. So these username and password are in plain text. So this is why it is dangerous to log in uh, with username, username and password on HTTP request. Okay. Okay, let's see another example. Minimize it. Okay. Uh, click on second link. Demo dot t3 framework dot org. Okay. This is also a HTTP site. Type username. Uh, okay. Admin. And password. One to the four. Okay. And then login. Okay. Then let's find the IP of this website. Let's clear the screen. And then think. Okay. Enter. So here's the IP. Then Open your Wireshark. Okay, change the IP. Okay, and enter. So, okay, here are many packets. Let's find ours. Okay, uh, click on this index.php okay and then okay process it then second one okay yeah so see here is your username and password admin in one two two four okay now i hope this much is clear to you okay now let's see why shark cli interface because uh, not all environments supports GUI Wireshark. So we have to work or get familiar with the CLI version. Okay, so open the terminal. Open your machine and the terminal. Okay, type T sharp hyphen hyphen head. T sharp for uh, Wireshark CLI version. Okay, enter. So help command shows you all the arguments that you can use with the uh, T sharp command. Okay, I for interface. F for capture filter, okay, and so on, okay. Now clear the screen, okay. So first,
to show all interfaces. Okay. The command will be tshar hyphen d. This will shows all uh, all the interfaces in your system. Okay. Let's see it. Tshar hyphen d. This will list all the interfaces. Okay. Now. Next is start capturing. For this T shark hyphen I. I stand for interface. Hyphen I and then the name of the interface. Okay, let's see. Um, T sharp hyphen I interface and name and number of the interface. Let's say one. Okay, enter. Okay, condition denied. We sudo put it sudo password. Okay, so it, uh, it start the capturing process on ENS thirty three interface. Okay, I hope this is clear to you all. You can use the number or name of the interface. Okay. Then clear the screen. And then now if you want to capture the packets on multiple interfaces. Then command T sharp use T sharp hyphen I one hyphen um, interface number or name hyphen I interface number one uh, and two. Okay, let's see it. No. So T sharp hyphen D and then sudo T sharp hyphen I for one and Hyphen I for two. Okay, it will capture the packet on uh, on interface one and two. Okay, so capturing on ENS ENS thirty three and any. Okay. Let's run it again. Um, let's generate some packets. Okay, no need. So I hope this much is clear. Then uh, next is if you want to save a file, like if you want to save this output to a certain file. Okay, then Save a file for that T sharp hyphen I interface name or number one hyphen W. Okay, and any path of the file path or the file where you want to save the file. Okay, then let's try near the screen and sudo. E char hyphen i interface name hyphen w and then emp I am saving it in temp directory. Look at temp and the name of the file file dot pcap. Okay, pcap is the extension of the y char. Okay. Enter. So it will count the numbers or show the numbers of uh, of the packets. Let's generate some packets. Okay, see. So now let's open this file dot pcap into our Bioshock. File open and then 
to your directory and then select your file, file.pk, open it. Okay, so here, here the packet. Okay, I hope this much is clear. Then, so now if you want to stop the capturing after a particular period of time automatically, so the command is to stop capturing. Uh, you can do this with the help of hyphen a command a for auto stop argument okay hyphen a then duration duration takes the argument in seconds so 10 seconds then hyphen w for the path save the file and then file name. Okay, let's try. Let's say Kishore hyphen I. File name. Okay. Uh, put sudo. Enter. So this will stop the capturing after a after 10 seconds and save into a file. Okay, let's try with 20 seconds. Okay, this will stop the capturing after 20 seconds. Now next, we want to split capturing into different files according to the size of the file. Uh, for example, like For this, you have to type t short hyphen i interface name, then hyphen movie for the file size to specify the file size. Okay, uh, let's suppose five KB per s. Okay, then hyphen a for the auto stop argument, then files. Okay, so it will split the files into three parts, and then hyphen let's save the file. Okay, let's try in a terminal. You should have hyphen i before put sudo. Then hyphen v. Pi size. Let's say 5 kb per s. Then hyphen a. Pi is 3. And then hyphen w. 10, then file let's see file for the ticket. Okay, before that, open another terminal and type text with temp directory near the city and type watch f and n one. And then the command ls ltr. Okay, 
So this command will show live update of the directory when new files keep on adding in the terminal. Okay. Then keep then aside. Enter. Enter. Okay, now let's generate some packets. Okay. See, first is generated file four, then file four, file one, file two. Now it will generate file three. See. So now capture filters and display filters. Capture filter uh, filters apply when you want to capture the specific amount of packets so that you won't run out of space. Because uh, this is the common problem that you can uh, that you can run out of sp uh, space when capturing a web server or a large organization packets. So and display filters apply when you want to display the specific packets but capture all packets. Okay. So now let's see to capture the spec uh, capture the specific filters. Okay. Okay, so capture the specific filter. Type T shirt. I found I interface name again. Okay, then I found F, F for filters, then filter for. Okay, now let's see in the terminal type t-shirt okay sudo t-shirt hyphen i one then hyphen f then open and then hit enter then you can apply as many as filter as you want okay so first port 80 then enter or enter port 443 then enter So it will capture the packets which are on, uh, on the port 80 and 443. Means HTTP and HTTP. So I so nest. So you can also run uh, with a second set of interface. For example, sudo t sharp f and i interface name. Okay. Then f uh, f and i another interface. And then hyphen F for filters and then enter it. Now port 80 or port 443. Enter. So it is capturing the uh, capturing the packets packet on ENS33 and ME, which are on the port 80 and 443. Okay. Now let's say uh, you want to filter the output file see the specific results okay so two filters the output file to see the specific results okay and type teacher hyphen r r for read path and name of the file okay then hyphen d Then hyphen D, hyphen D for uh, to apply fields, and then hyphen D uh, to apply which fields? Okay, IP. Suppose IP grab unit. Okay, let's try this. Let's clear the screen. Okay, uh, CD temp. Where we uh, where we have all our files. Then T shark. Okay, before that ls. Okay, suppose we want uh, we want to filter out this file. Okay. 
then t-shirt hyphen i sorry i have art then file name let's see file info one okay then hyphen capital d deals hyphen e ip grab unique my mind so don't so it will display all the source and destination IP uh, which is which are unique in nature okay if you want to only display the source IP then IP dot source enter okay or if you want to display the destination IP then destination IP. DST. Okay. 